a good God or what? Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Tell you like I tell St. John, if it was for me, that's better than I deserve. But since it's for God, give God a hand clap of praise. I heard the saints of old say, when I think about all the things that God has done for me, but what I realize in life is that I can't think about all the things he's done for me because I don't know what they are. But when I can think about just a few things that he's done for me, I get happy, I get excited, because I know I don't deserve him, but just because he's good, and just because he's good all by himself, I just want to praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him now. Oh yeah, he's good, he's good. Oh, he's good, he's good. Good, 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 good. Oh yeah, 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 he's good. Oh, he's good, he's good, he's good. I just get excited when it comes to God. Because I know what a wretch. You know, I tell people all the time, when he came and got me, he had some hard work to do. But I sure thank him for coming. I just thank him for coming. Let me, now, 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 let me see if I can bring this down for just a minute, because he's good, y'all. Them chillings done sang. I'm from Coco. I'm from Coco. I get a little country sometimes, but them children done sang today. Yeah, yeah. If you didn't know no better, they'll have you fooled. Because them babies says that they're living in authority. They said they belong here. And you might as well. I'm ready for y'all. Just come on there. You might as well get used to it. I'm, I'm ready for them. Yeah. Sometimes you have to go somewhere else to see what you got. And in Macedonia, let me tell you, if you don't know what you got, you got a prize back there. You got a prize back there. Let me know. I know, I know, I know that protocol has already been established. But let me just put my little two cents in. First of all, I want to give honor to a God that somewhere I read he was the maker and the creator. And I just want to thank him for what he made and what he created. But the story tells me that it didn't stop there. They tell me he sent something that was precious to him. He sent his son, Jesus Christ. And when he came, the word tells me that I wasn't fit to live. Wasn't ready to die. So what he did, he gave his life for me. So I just thank God for his son and my savior, Jesus Christ. And if old folks said that, that ain't enough for you. Let me take you just a step further. I thank God for his precious gift of the Holy Spirit. You see, because sometimes I need some comfort in him. What he does is he comforts me. Sometimes I need some teaching, and what he does is he teach me. Sometimes I need some guidance, and what he does is he guide me. But every day of my life, he tells me that God loves me and that I am his own. And so I thank him for that. And then, I know y'all going to shout on this one. I thank God for Pastor Reginald. You can do it, you can do it. It's all right. For Pastor Reginald Curry. And then I thank God for his first lady. And I, and I didn't see her, but raise your hand for me, sweetheart. That yonder she is. Thank God for first lady. For all these who grace the roster, bless you. And if you have a spouse, bless them as well. To each and every one of God's folks. I just thank you and thank you for the opportunity. Don't worry, y'all. I, I haven't got C now yet. There's a little man from Mississippi that one day he was hanging around Brownsville. Saw him a cute little girl and asked the Lord, was that the one for him? And God gave me to him. And I just thank God for Brother Derek Devon Otis. Wave your hand, baby. Amen. And I don't. I wanna. I wanna take a minute to. Uh, it's just a little long, but I wanna thank some Saint Jonians.
as we call them, been in church all morning. And then after church, they took a little time to come to church again. And I want to thank you. Wave your hand, St. John. Thank you, thank you. And then Minister Hudson, who, who, who sits in the pulpit with me, and I always tell him he's my brother from another mother. But we both came from the same God. And I just thank God for that. I thank God for that. And then I want to thank the missionary department. And, and like you said, I'm, I'm awful with names. And the president of the missionary department, where are you? Thank God for you. And I thank God for each and every one of you for having me. Uh, there is a word from the Lord. And I, as Pastor, Pastor Curry says, I, oh, God, I forget Pastor Shaw. Oh, my goodness. Don't nobody tell him that. Oh, my goodness, I'm doing bad, Pastor, all over again. <laughs> to honor to my pastor, Johnny Wilson Shaw, and, and our first lady, Sister Oprah Shaw. And, and, and I know that you have your Bible because Christians just can't go without a word. And I know that the word says that his word has I hid in my heart that I might not sin against him. But every so often, I have to pull it out so I can look at it on a little paper because it's so much that every once in a while, to just read it again, it does my heart good. If you will, if you, if you have your Bible, if you'll open it to the book of Mark, the book of Mark, the 16th chapter, and my subject first will be Mark 16, verse 7. But I want to read some other verses with it to just start us off. If you're there, say amen. If you're not, say I'm still training my Bible, so give me a minute. Sometimes we get those new Bibles and the leaves are still sticking together. But we thank God for his word. I'm excited, y'all. I'm just excited, first of all, to be amongst you. Second of all, that the God has allowed me another opportunity to share his word with his folks. And something to shout about, you know. If you're there, say amen. amen. And let's start at Mark 16, and I'll be reading from the New International, New International Study Bible. And I want to start at the first verse when it says, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they may go to, the anointed, to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up and saw that the stone, which was a very large, and had been rolled away, as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus of Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter. He's gone ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him again, just as he told you. Want to take for a thought? Go tell. Just want to talk for just as long as the Holy Spirit tells me. And I'm usually somewhat obedient. And when I get out of line, believe me, the Holy Spirit lets me know that as well. So what I try hard to do is stay in line so that the opportunity presents itself again. When I was thinking on missionary, I... I, I began to have to realize, I had to realize that I had to look the word up to actually see the, the Webster definition. The Webster de definition of missionary says that it's a person sent on a religion mission, especially one that's sent to promote Christianity in a foreign country. Well, when I looked at that, I realized that that was a noun. And what that does, that tells us who the person is. And so, 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 so that doesn't mean the person have to do a lot. 
the, that tells us who the person is. But what I've learned about missionary work is that it has some work. It is what you call, you have to be devoted to what God has called you and to the mission that God has sent us for. Well, then I said, well, let me go back a little deeper then because that's the noun. Then I had to go and look at what the adjective said. The adjective says that it is the characteristic of a religion missionary on a religion mission. Then I got to thinking, okay, what does it mean? Because when I was getting ready to come over here to Macedonia, I had some people to tell me that you got to, when you go to Macedonia, you got some people over there with some education. <laughs> so some, some education. So they told me I got to go with my, 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 my best coat on. So when I started talking about missionary, and then I started, looked at it the noun, and then I looked at it as the adjective, I had to ask myself, Pastor, because sometimes a person like me, I have to go to the Lord and say I'm simple-minded. The Lord has to break it down spiritually for me just a little bit more. Because, see, sometimes I ain't up there yet. And the Lord has to fix it where I can understand it. So even after I read what it was as a noun, even after I read what it was as an adjective, I said, somebody still got to help me. Because what I realized is I was still just a tad bit lost. So then I went ahead and looked, and it says that an adjective is an expression of a characteristic. I said, I'm on board now. Because what that tells me is that it's not just enough to be a missionary because the noun tells me that a person doesn't have to go anywhere, doesn't have to do anything, they can sit within the four walls and still be a missionary. I'm going, we're going to get this in a minute. They can still be a missionary. But when he tells me that there's an, an adjective to it and it says that an adjective is the characteristic of the missionary, that means the missionary has some work to do. Oh, yeah, we like titles. We'll stick a title to our name in a minute, and then we'll sit like that's all there is to it. But missionary says there's some work. There's some work. There's some work to be done. Yeah, that's what it says now. So, so when I started reading this, and I, and, and, and I started with the seventh chapter, and I was just going to talk on Go Tell. The scripture told me you got to bag this thing up a little bit. There were some things that had happened prior to this chapter 16. And, 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 and what had happened was that Jesus had been crucified. He had been crucified. And even before that, some things that Jesus had attached to him. Because think about it. Jesus was walking and he was doing work. But every time we get people that are going to go with us, sometimes what we're going to learn early in life is that we have to go if we have to go by ourselves. Help me with this. I, I got you. Jesus on his missionary work because that's what he did. But when he got in trouble, this is what happened. John, John ran off and left him. When he got in trouble, Judas was the one that portrayed him. And when he got in trouble, if that wasn't enough, Peter was the one that denied him. If that ain't enough for you, Pilate was the one that washed his hands of him. And if that ain't enough for you, the people were the one that cried, crucify him. Oh, he's on a journey now. He's on a journey. But everybody that's attached to him, somehow or another, when things got rough, they seem to disappear. So what I want to tell you, ladies, is when you get on this plane, sometimes you're going to have to fly by yourself. When you get on this train, sometimes you got to travel by yourself. But when you say you're a missionary for the word of God, that means you go where God tells you to go. And then you go if you have to go by yourself. Jesus healing, folks. I'm on board. Jesus giving sight to the blind. I'm on board. Jesus breaking bread and blessing it and, and feeding 5,000. I'm on board. But when they get in the garden, he's all by himself. Peter, one of his best men. You know him. You know him. I'll fight for you to the end. I'm with you, Jesus. No matter. Hey, we're going to ride and die. I, I'm with you. And then when he get in the garden, he pull out the sword. And Jesus said, hey, that ain't the fight we got to do. He said, but Peter, before this is over, you're going to deny me three times. Yeah, yeah. And Peter walking. You know him. Trying to follow and see what happens. And as he followed Jesus, one woman said, you, you the one. Peter said, I ain't told you. Somebody going to tell you, when you ain't in these four walls, you the one. 
when you when you in a you in a situation where it seems like nobody say but you, they're gonna say you the one. You're gonna have to be the one to say, Yes, I am. Don't take the Peter attitude. In other words, folks shouldn't have to follow you to see who you follow. Peter followed Jesus and he died, denied him three times. And so now, now, now Jesus, we the lesson bring us to to, to the women who are traveling with Jesus. And, and the, the verse says, and, and I'm going to back you up, and we're going to start with verse six, 16, verse 1. They said it was on the Sabbath, and it had, it, the Sabbath was just over. They said it was Mary Magdalene, and get this, Mary the mother of James and Salome. Shouldn't be surprising to you, because remember I told you, Judas betrayed him. John ran off and left him. Peter denied him. Just make sure you ain't a part of this now. Pilate washed his hands of him, and his people cried, crucify. So it's Jesus. He'd been crucified. They buried him in the tomb, and there's some women that are traveling now. They're on their way because they want to see where Jesus is. They're going to prepare a dead body. Now, this is the thing about missionary. You got to be poised. These were not women that were being nosy. They were not women who were just curious. They were on a mission. Missionary day, right? They were on a mission. And the mission they were on, they were going to anoint a dead body. Y'all going to get this in a minute. They were on their way to a Anoint a dead body. Had some of the best spices, y'all. Traveling and, and had their mind focused. If you're going to stay in this thing called this missionary work, you got to keep your mind focused. You got to separate yourself from some stuff, and you got to separate yourself from some folks because there's going to be some people that's going to tell you you're running down the wrong road. There are going to be some people that's going to leave you hanging by yourself. But you know that you've been called, so you got to hang in there when you're traveling by yourself. Oh, uh, yeah, there's going, to be, there's going to be some people. So they're, they're poised. They, they got their mindset. They know what their mission is. They're going to anoint a dead body. As they travel, they began to think about something. They began to ask themselves. The word said they said it to themselves. They said, now when we get there, who gonna? When we get there, who gonna roll the stone away? Who gonna do it? That's just one problem. When you start this walk for Christ, there are some issues you're gonna be able to see. And you're gonna be you're gonna ask yourself, because think about it. That's something they should have thought about before they started this journey. Sometimes we can't think about all the things that we're going to encounter when we think about the journey. But as they were thinking about who was going to roll the stone away, I'm here to tell you that's just part of the issue. They forgot there's supposed to be some soldiers. Supposed to be some soldiers guarding the body. But all they could think about was that little thing that was in their way as far as who's going to roll the stone away. Seemed like it was a big enough problem to me, but they went on that journey anyway. Seemed like somebody had some faith. Didn't know how it was going to work out. Didn't know what was going to do, because even while they were walking and thinking, they kept on going. They knew that there was an obstacle that was going to be there, but they kept on going, as old folks say, anyhow. You got you to gotta keep on going, y'all. There's going to sometime be that husband that don't want you to go. There's going to sometime be those children that can find anything to keep you at the house. There's sometimes going to be a job that's always got something extra for you to do. There's always going to be something in your way to stop you from your mission. But you got to be poised. You got to be focused. You got to keep your mind on why you in this thing. And so as they walk and they thought about all the things that was going on, they thought about the, the stone, yet they forgot about the guards. But they kept on walking anyway. 
And the Bible says that when they got there, the stone, there was a man sitting. It said that, that it made me think something because said when they looked up, it made me think that they must have got a little sad along the way. It made me think that they had dropped their head because they was wondering how we going to get through this thing. And as they was walking, they said when they got there, they looked up and there was a man sitting on a rock. So he was sitting on the right hand. And he asked them a question. He asked them, who they, who are you looking for? He said, because the one you're looking for, he's not here. And so now, now some Bibles, depending upon where you read, depend upon how you study, but all of it should end up with where the Spirit leads you. Some Bible says that when they went there and he asked them who they were looking for, they became afraid. Some theologians said they were not afraid, they were in awe. But I just had to take my spiritual mind with me. If I go to a place where a stone is rolled in front of a tomb, and I know there's no way for the tomb to be rolled away when I get there, not only are the hearts gone and the stone rolled away, but there's a man sitting on a rock, dressed white as snow, and he asked me, what are you looking for? Yeah, I'm afraid now, y'all, because that's different from anything that I've seen. The ministry that you're in, sometimes you're going to come up against stuff that you had never seen before. Might make you just a little afraid and, and make you scared, but that wasn't the only reason they were scared, because they realized, too, they wonder, was this the God? that was there to bring harm. So he asked them who they're looking for. And they began to say, Jesus, the angel told them, Jesus of Nazareth, if that's who you're looking for, he's not here. A lot of times when, when we think about what Jesus has done, women going on their way to anoint his body, they went there to anoint a dead body. They went to anoint him who was dead. That's what they went to do. But at the end, the angel said, it's time to rejoice in him who is alive. So he's no longer dead. He's, he's alive. He said he was crucified. So he didn't, he didn't want them to be confused. Now, he was crucified, which means he did die. But the Bible says he's no longer dead. He said he has risen. He's gotten up, and he is not here. And then they told him, said, the place where they laid him, he's not there anymore. He said, but go, go tell. Go, go and tell. Then this is where it get really deep for us. The Bible says that he told them to go tell. Here it is, a group of women. And the Bible says the angel told them to go tell. They were afraid because women weren't supposed to tell the word. They were afraid because they were, first of all, not supposed to be at the tomb. They started wondering, what are people going to think? Well, this is what we get on board, y'all. We can't worry about what folks think. And we know that God has called us. What we need to do is just get on board. If we say that God has called us to this missionary work, what we need to do is get on board. We ain't talking about the title. We're talking about the adjective. We're talking about the characteristic of a missionary. We're talking about work that God has for us to do. There's some work that he has for us to do. And if we're going to do the work of God, the first thing we got to do, we got to get up early in the morning. Because the word says those women got up early that morning. If you listen to the word, it said when Jesus got up, the dew was still on the ground. So I'm under the impression that when those women got up, it was dark that morning. And yet they still set out on a journey. Sometimes when I set out on my journey, it's dark sometimes. So the impression that I got is that even though it was dark, they kept on going anyhow. And even knowing that they were going to meet some obstacles, they kept on going anyhow and when they got to the tomb the word was given to them if you want a word you got to get up early in the morning even if things come up against you you got to keep on going anyhow it's okay to be a missionary with a noun but God needs a missionary that's an adjective he need a missionary that's gonna work he need a missionary that's gonna travel he need a missionary that's gonna seek those souls 
that are lost. He told his, he told his disciples, greater works. He told his disciples, greater work will you do. Who is it that want to do some great work for God? You want to do some great work for God? Stand on your feet. Tell God, I'm not just a missionary with the noun. I'm a missionary with the adjective. I'm ready to work. I'm ready to run. I'm ready to talk. I'm ready to do whatever it is that God has for me to do. Get up, tell somebody you're ready to work now. Tell somebody I'm not just an adjective with a noun. Tell somebody I'm a missionary as an adjective. Or you got to work now. Can't be scared. Then the angel said, let's not stop it here. He said, I got something for you to do. Oh, I got something for you to do. It's a good thing to be chosen. Everybody has not chosen to carry the word of God. That means it was some special hardworking women. They were devoted. How you know they got up early? They were devoted. How you know they were poised? They were devoted. How you know even when they thought about how it was going to happen, they kept on going? Anyhow, you got to keep on going. Anyhow, the angel said, I got your resume. Now that I got your resume, he said, let me give you something else to do. He said, go tell. Yeah, go tell. I know, you know, I'm going to stick this in here. I know he said, go tell the disciples, the apostles, and then tell Peter. y'all the reason he said go tell the apostles gotta back you up again yeah. Judas per trained him John ran out on him yeah. Peter D nine Pilate washed his and the people cried but when he got up but when he got up but when he got up he told Mary Magdalene go tell my disciples and Peter come on meet me now I've done what I said I'm gonna do go tell go tell if that ain't good enough for you go tell what go tell that my cow said it got a little quiet on us it was about 400 years and sound like things got quiet. But he said, go tell. Go tell what? Go tell that John is in the wilderness. He's in the wilderness crying, making a way, saying, make straight the way. Go tell. If they ain't enough for you, go tell. There's a man named Jesus that was born of a virgin called Mary. Go tell somebody. Go tell him he was a sign, an earthly father named Joseph. Go tell somebody that he's given sight to the blind. He's giving the, he's making the, those that can't hear, they can hear. He's giving the lame the ability to walk. Go tell somebody. See, somebody has lost their hope. Somebody has lost their direction. Go tell them that he's giving sight to the blind. If that ain't enough for you, go tell them that he's going to walk this earth for 33 and a half long years. Go tell now. Go tell somebody that he gave his life while I was yet in my sin. Go tell somebody when they hung on a cross, took time long enough to stop dying, to look down on a woman like me and said, Lord, have mercy on her. Took time to stop dying long enough to, to save the thief that hung on the cross beside. Go tell somebody. Missionaries, you're not a noun. You ain't a noun no more. You're an adjective now. Go tell somebody. And if that ain't enough for you, because I don't want to leave a man on the cross. If that ain't enough for you, tell somebody that they buried him in a borrowed tomb. That ain't enough for you. Tell somebody that he stayed in the grave for three long days. That ain't enough for some of them, Pastor. If that ain't enough for you, tell somebody that he got up. 
that up. Oh, go tell. Go tell missionaries. Go tell somebody missionary. Go tell them that he got up. And when he got up, he got up not with sun power, not with a piece of power, not with black power, but when he got up, he got up wrong. He got up with all power. All power. What am I gonna tell him now? He got up with all power. The power that make me walk right. The power that make me talk right. The power that tells me that he's not giving me the gift of fear. The power that tells me that I belong here. The power that tells me that get ready world. I don't walk in sit and sin. Now I'm telling you now, tell somebody that God is God in all but himself. Tell somebody Jesus now sits on the right hand of the Father. Tell somebody he's making intercessory for them. Tell somebody there's new hope. There's new hope. There's new hope. I got a witness who is a John said now I preach the word like I never preached it before because he told me it's all right. Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. He preached and 3,000 souls were saved. Just because Jesus told him it's all right. If God has told you it's all right, go tell somebody. Keep it. How can you keep it to yourself? Oh God, when you know how good he is to you. How can you tell Mary Magdalene? How can you keep it to yourself? How is it that you don't want people to know the goodness? The goodness, the goodness of God. Missionaries, it's time to get over the now. It's time to walk into the adjective. It's time to tell somebody. There's an expression of my attributes. My attributes say I'm Christ-like. I walk like he walk. Oh, yeah, we're talking about women now. I know, I know, I'm just, excuse me for just a minute, Pastor. I walk like he walk. Hell, I t yeah, I tell anybody, I talk like he talk. I, I tell him. They tell me sometimes, Pastor, I don't have a right to be in a pulpit. You know what I tell them, that's okay. I preach it from the floor. I don't mind. And if they don't want me in the church, I tell them, can I stand at your door? In one place I know they can't stop me. I stand in the street. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, ladies, we you may not have a place to stand in the church. If you have to stand in the street, go tell somebody. Tell somebody. He's alive. He's alive. He is. A lie. And this is the last piece I want to leave with you. Leave the noun. It's a whole heap of us that then stuck some titles to our name. Because I'm Dr. So and so. I'm Minister Who 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 Who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Evangelist Wah 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 Wah. All those titles we put to our name. They're now. God wants some adjectives. God wants some people that's going to work. That's what he wants. Pretty white, y'all look good. Y'all look real good. But sometimes your white got to get dirty. Because the work of God ain't always clean. But it's rewarding. They went to anoint him who was dead. But they left rejoicing him who is alive. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Go. Go, y'all. When you leave here, go. Go tell that Jesus is alive. Giving sight still to the blind. Healing those 
who are sick, but gives salvation to those who are lost. You got to give some folks some hope. And look at this. I'm trying to leave this alone, Pastor. Look at this, y'all. He chose you. Oh, that ain't enough for you. He chose you to go tell somebody else. He chose you to go tell somebody about God. John ran away. Judas betrayed him. Peter denied him. Pilate washed his hands of him. And the people cried, crucify. And the angel said, go tell. Come on, celebrate God in this place. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Bless God for this woman of God, for this awesome word. We have an awesome responsibility. And that responsibility is to go and tell. But she said something right here at the end. It was like a bolt of lightning. In that he did something he didn't have to do. But he saw something in each and every one of us. And he chose us. He chose us. He didn't have to die for us. But he chose us. Thank you. There's somebody here today. You haven't come into the knowledge of it yet, but I hope that today is your day. Somebody here today needs to know that he chose you to the unsaved. He died for all. of the unsaved that they might be saved while you are yet in your sin today I come to tell you he chose you to be forgiven of your sin and to be accepted into his family if you're here today I extend an invitation to the unsaved that they might receive salvation today. If you're here today and you're not saved, just as he has chosen you, I petition you today to choose him. If you're here today, won't you come? Maybe you're saved and you don't have a church home. And you've made it up into your mind today that Macedonia would be the perfect home for you today. If you're here today and you have a desire to fellowship with this, the Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church, and become a member of this church, if you're looking for a church home, you have that desire, won't you come today? Maybe you're here today and you have a church home, but you're not comfortable in your current church home setting. But you found this setting to be one where you could freely worship him in spirit and in truth. If you're here today, I extend an invitation for you to come today as well. Won't you come? Will you make up your mind today? I see that there are none. Hallelujah, belong 
but there yet still room. You may be seated even as the choir sing. If you have a desire to come, that invitation is yet still extended.
get ready to know that some missionary work is coming. Yeah. And we getting on an agony to yeah. and, 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 and and we got some things that we got to shout about. You don't told us what to do. And, and we're going to fly all around. And we're going to tell everybody that we come in contact with it. No, we just don't have this white on for nothing. We got some missionary work we got to do. We got to tell folks about just how good God has been to us. And Pastor Kerry, I got to tell you this. I'm going to go and sit down because she don't gave it to me. But you know, I've been sick. And people have been calling me on the phone. But the church you come see, the church you come uh, uh, visit for several months and all this kind of stuff. No, you know, I, I wasn't doing it. I wasn't doing it. I wasn't doing it, Pastor Kerry. But I got sick. I've been sick. I have been sick, you know. And then a couple of weeks ago when Carolyn Kearney called me on the phone, and then somebody else called, and somebody else called. So I said, okay, God, you ain't playing with me. <laughs> you ain't playing with me. So, you know, I'm on the plane, baby. I'm on the plane. And I ask that you pray with me because I'm, I'm going to try to do what I can do. But this has certainly been a grand day, and I, I love coming to uh, Macedonia, you know. I, I got to tell you about how me, you know, me, and Will, me and Pat and Marie do, you know. But Pastor Kerry, my pastor, you know, we go way back. We go way back, and I love Macedonia, you know, but it is what it is. Okay. <laughs> okay. But I have enjoyed myself. Thank you for inviting me. And you all know if there's any time that y'all need me to do anything that come to this church, I'll be glad to come here and do it. But I'm going to ask you today at 2 o'clock to please come and join the historic First Baptist as we celebrate 151 years. Uh, come and join us. And again, thank you, and it's been my pleasure to be with you today. Thank you so much. <laughs>